Welcome to AP Biology. Today we're going to talk about the cell cycle and its regulation, and when that goes wrong, sometimes cancer happens. So the cell cycle starts with a brand new baby cell. The previous cell did mitosis, made two cells, and here is one of the new cells, and it goes into the G1 phase first, and usually it grows at that time, but it just does sort of life things. And then it does synthesis, which is when it copies its DNA. The DNA is all uncoiled through these phases. These are both parts of interphase. So interphase includes G1, S, and G2. Those are all interphase. And then finally, Finally, right here, we have mitosis. And mitosis is split into four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then there's cytokinesis right here at the end. So mitosis is splitting the nucleus and cytokinesis is splitting the cell itself. So we already did a unit on that, and now we're talking about regulation of this cell cycle. So how does the cell know when it's ready to go from the G1 phase to the S phase? Has it grown enough? Um, are there any errors in the DNA? Is it ready to go on or should it just stay right here in G1? Or perhaps maybe it should just leave the cell cycle to G0 where it's just sort of um, doing life stuff but not gonna reproduce. So there are chemical signals that tell the cell, hey, you're ready to do synthesis or you're not. Um, and there are other uh, what we call checkpoints, another one here where the cell says, hey, am I ready to do mitosis? Have I copied my DNA appropriately? Um, have I made everything I need for mitosis? Do I have enough of the spindle fiber um, pre-components made? Am, am I ready, right? Do I have all the enzymes I need? Um, and then there's a checkpoint here in mitosis right at the end of metaphase. Hey, am I ready to actually separate out these chromosomes? So how does the cell regulate all these steps? Um, there are checkpoints and um, molecular signals. And so that's what we're going to look at. And when that gets messed up, the cell can become cancerous. So that's what we're going to look at. So just as a preview to this, let's look at this. Which types of cells are more likely to become cancerous? So you really don't need to memorize cell types, but what you need to see is that cells that divide quickly are more likely to become cancerous. So here's G1, brand new baby cell here, right? Synthesis, G2, and mitosis. If the cell goes through mitosis a lot, then it's copied its DNA many, many times, which means it's more likely to have made a mistake at some point. So like my skin cells reproduce pretty much every day, that's 52 years times 365 days per year. That, that's a lot of mitosis, right? More when I was younger, um, maybe a couple times a day back then. So those cells have done a lot of mitosis. Whereas the cells in my brain, you know, there are some areas in the brain that uh, where the neurons do mitosis, but most of my neurons in my brain are not doing mitosis. And I know that because I still remember stuff um, from way back when right? So they don't do this cell cycle thing very much. So those cells are less likely to become, become cancerous, first of all, because they're not really in the cell cycle anyway. And second of all, because they haven't really done synthesis very much. So they haven't had a lot of opportunities to make a whole lot of mistakes. Whereas my skin cells, my colon cells, my lung cells certainly have. So they are more likely to develop mutations. And they're also, some of these cell types are also exposed to um, carcinogens more. Um, or things that can cause mutations. So like my skin is exposed to ultraviolet radiation way more than my tendons and ligaments inside my body are. The cells in my lungs are more exposed to just the bad stuff, the pollutants in the air, um, compared to cells that are not on some surface. So I'm talking about either, either an external surface like the skin or an internal surface like the GI tube, you know, down to, through the colon or the, the lungs. Okay, so rate of cell division examples, you do not need to memorize that, but skin cells multiply every day. Your skin, the whole thing is renewed like every couple of weeks or so. Your liver cells, on the other hand, don't divide much, maybe once or twice a year. 
um, or every other year, I guess. Uh, nerve cells, muscle cells ha hardly divide at all. Once you hit maturity, they generally do not divide. There are some areas in the brain where the nerve cells do divide, but most of them really don't. And your muscle cells are pretty much done um, in an adult. Okay, so here are some rates of cancer. You really don't need to know any of these, but um, epithelial, epithelial, epithelial. These are all layers, um, like as in, uh, I didn't say that right, coverings. Um, colon cancer, skin, bladder. Um, this actually is not um, an epithelial, nor is this one, um, but they do have fast rates of, of cell division anyway. Okay, so normal cells move through the cell cycle in a regulated way. It's when they're not regulated the right way that they could become cancerous. So how does, so first we're gonna look at this normal regulated way. How do the cells normally know how to go through the cell cycle? So they use internal cues and environmental cues. By inter internal cues, I mean inside the cell itself. So here's a cell. If there's something inside that says, hey, let's divide or let's not divide, I'm gonna call that an internal cue. So an internal cue might be, hey, is my DNA okay? Did I copy my DNA appropriately? Are there any mutations that I can find? Um, another internal cue might be, do I have enough nutrients? Um, am I kind of starved or do I have plenty of nucleotides, H's, T's, C's, and G's? Do I have enough energy? Um, do I have, uh, you know, ATP? Have I made enough ATP? Do I have enough um, uh, amino acids to make the proteins do, that I need? Have I grown enough? right? So those are all internal cues. Environmental cues does not mean outside the body. It means outside the cell. So for example, this cell might have um, surface markers all over it, right? That kind of, it's hard to draw them, but whoops, that kind of maybe look like this. And the other cells have them too. And so the other cells are saying, oh my God, we're both cells of the same type. You shouldn't divide because there's plenty of us. So an external or, or a cue from outside of the cell might be, hey, is there more room for cells? And all these other cells are going to be giving this cell input. No, we're all set. You don't need to divide. Or maybe there's a cell over here that's releasing um, growth factors that tell this cell, hey, I actually I, I do need you to divide. So those are all outside of the cell itself. So in what parts of the cell cycle do the cells um, control their rates of division? There are checkpoints. So a cell cycle checkpoint is sort of like a checkpoint you might see on the road. Here's a police officer, maybe it's New Year's Eve, and this is a checkpoint where the police officers are all uh, checking people in the cars um, to see if they um, have a blood alcohol level that's high enough that these people shouldn't be driving. So that would be a checkpoint to say, yeah, you're okay to go, but no, you need to stop. And so eukaryotic cells have these checkpoints. Um, it helps the cell to decide whether or not to divide. So there are three important checkpoints that I want you to know. There's one at the G1, the end of G1, um, that says, hey, are we ready? So if, here's the cell cycle, right? Cell cycle. So here is mitosis, which means here you have a brand new baby cell. Um, I don't know. It's a new somatic cell. It's a new body cell. Maybe I shouldn't call it a baby cell because it could be an old person like me. So this is a new body cell. Sometimes we call body cells somatic cells because somatic means body. Whoops, somatic cell. Okay, so anyway, it's going through G1. I don't know if you can see that. This says G1. G1 is just the first uh, gap. It's generally where the cell grows. Um, there's some exceptions, but generally the cell is growing then. And then it gets to maybe toward the end of G1, and there's this G1 checkpoint. If the cell has grown enough, if it has enough nutrients, if other cells are saying, go ahead, you should do cell division, and nobody around it is saying, hey, I think you should stop, if it's ready, it will go through this checkpoint. It will have the right chemical signals that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, it'll have the right chemical signals to go ahead and do synthesis. If it doesn't, it will just do one of two things. It might just hang out in G1 a little bit longer, growing a little bit more, getting some more nutrients, um, checking that its DNA is all set. And then later it can go through this checkpoint and um, into synthesis. So this checkpoint might be a spot where the cell is just saying, hold on, we're just going to pause. You're going to do synthesis. You're going to do this stuff eventually, but you're not quite ready yet. 
Or it's a place where the cell is just like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go into G0. G0 just means, yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to do mitosis. Um, maybe I'm a nerve cell and I'm really just busy doing nerve signals. Um, I'm, I'm taking impulses or input from other neurons and deciding if I need to fire or not. Or maybe I'm a muscle cell and my job is contraction and I really am not going to do mitosis. So they might go into the G0 um, phase. So this G1 checkpoint is a really important one. We call it sometimes the restriction checkpoint um, because at that point, if you don't go through this, you're not going to do the whole rest of the cell cycle. If you can't get through here, you're never going to do mitosis. Whereas if you do get through this, if you do copy your DNA, right, S is where you copy your DNA, there's really no point in copying your DNA if you're never going to get around to mitosis. So once you get through this checkpoint, you're probably going to go ahead and do mitosis. And then the next, and so I'll come back and talk about these in a little bit more detail, but the next checkpoint is G2. So there's a checkpoint right at the end of interphase. So the ones shown in pink here are interphase, and then the purple one is mitosis. So at the very end of um, G2, before the cell hits mitosis, there's another checkpoint. And at this point, the cell says, hmm, did I copy my DNA okay? Is everything all set? Do I have any mutations that I need to fix? So this is just a pause usually to say, hey, am I really good to go into mitosis? Have I copied the components of um, of the spindle fibers that I'm going to need in mitosis. Because remember, through interphase, this pink part, the DNA is all uncoiled, right? The DNA is uncoiled in interphase. Interphase is this whole thing through G1, S, and G2. <clears throat> so the DNA is uncoiled so that it's pretty much available to enzymes so that you can do the whole DNA makes RNA makes protein thing. If you need any proteins for mitosis, you better make them now because once you get to mitosis, you're going to coil up that DNA because you need to move it, but you won't be able to use it. So the G2 checkpoint is mainly a pause to say, hey, did I do the previous step right? Is the DNA copied okay? Are there any mutations that I need to fix? Your cell has DNA repair enzymes that can fix them if, if you need to. And it also is just a pause to say, hey, do I, do I have all the proteins I need for mitosis? Do I have my spindle fibers? Did I copy my um, centrioles okay? Is everything all set? Are we good to go? So it's mainly just a pause, not a, not a question, right? Whereas the G1 checkpoint is both a pause and a question. Do I want to do this at all? If once you get through G1, you're pretty much going to do the whole thing eventually. However, the G2 checkpoint, if you find a cell in G2, um, at the G2 checkpoint, and there's so much DNA damage that it really shouldn't do mitosis, it can just die then. It can do apoptosis and just stop. So it's usually a pause, but it can be, um, it can be a, a checkpoint to say, hey, should I do mitosis at all still? And then finally, there's another one at the spindle um, checkpoint. So what that means is metaphase. So let me uh, erase this stuff so you can see. Okay, so at metaphase, sometimes we call it the spindle checkpoint or we could call it the M uh, checkpoint. So at metaphase, the chromosomes should be all lined up in a row at the metaphase plate or the equator like this. But let's say that um, we have some that haven't quite moved to where they need to go yet. So let's say we have one over here and it's not quite all lined up where it needs to be. So when that happens, um, this is just a pause, right? You just pause right here and you say, okay, folks, we're not ready. Let's just give all these chromosomes a chance to do uh, what they need to do. So, hey, chromosome, we're going to give you a minute. Oh, you're ready now? You're uh, at the metaphase plate, super duper. Okay, everybody, we're all set. Everybody's where they need to be. Uh, let's go ahead and do anaphase. So this spindle checkpoint right here between, uh, well, at the end of metaphase is just a point uh, to say, hey, are we all caught up? Do we have all of our chromosomes in the right place?